Welcome back to Disera Media Literacy, the radio series that aims to educate and empower listeners to navigate the media landscape in a critical and informed way. In this episode, we will focus on protecting yourself from disinformation online. We have explained in a previous episode what disinformation is, but to recap, it is false or misleading information that is spread deliberately to deceive. It can take many forms, such as hoaxes, conspiracy theories and propaganda. What are the types of disinformation? There are many different types of disinformation. A hoax, which we have also mentioned in a previous episode, is false information that is spread with the intent of tricking people. Conspiracy theories are false or unproven claims about secret, often sinister, plots. Propaganda is information that is spread with the intent of influencing people's opinions and actions. And how do we protect ourselves from disinformation? The online world can seem like a scary environment, especially as we get older and less familiar with new technologies. It is tempting to give up on it or to become paranoid about every post. But there are so many positive aspects to engaging with online communities that it is much better to be informed about the risks and learn how to identify when we are being misled and deceived. In the last episode, we outlined ways to stay secure online and protect yourself from abuse. Here are some tips for spotting and protecting yourself from disinformation. Keep your social media accounts private and only accept friend requests from people you know in the real world. If in doubt, check the person's profile and if they have very few followers or friends and few photos of themselves in normal situations, then they are probably not authentic. No, that handsome Navy officer with a private yacht who has just privately messaged you and told you that you are his soulmate is not real. Before sharing posts, check the source of the post and read the full content, not just the headline. After reading a post, check how you feel. Many fake news posts try to create panic or fear in the reader. Others who want to manipulate or scam you might try to charm you or play on your emotions to get you to commit to something. Be sceptical of information that confirms your pre-existing beliefs or opinions. Look for sources that have a good reputation for accuracy and impartiality, such as .org, .gov or .edu websites. Check the author's credentials and expertise on the subject matter. Be wary of clicking on sources that use sensational or biased language. Be wary of information that is being spread by a large number of accounts, especially if those accounts have no followers or have been created recently. Don't feed the trolls. Trolls, or people who make false or unfounded comments to harass, incite anger, hurt and arguments. They are found in comments, chat rooms, forums and posts purely to disrupt and get a reaction. Replying to their comments just fuels their activity and can make you a target. If in any doubt about a post's source or agenda, don't share or don't like it. Care what you share. Think about the stress, anxiety or fear that you might be spreading about something that you cannot confirm is true. Ask an expert. If in doubt about information, ask someone like your local librarian or someone who you know has the knowledge to research and investigate the information that you are concerned about. Our next episode will focus on media literacy and civic engagement. 
Be sure to tune in to the seventh episode of Disara Media Literacy. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out our website for more information and resources on media literacy. Thank you for tuning in to Disara Media Literacy. And until next time, stay informed, stay curious and stay media literate. So we've just heard the lesson and it's about protecting yourself from disinformation online, which we'll all agree is so important. And it mentioned um, a few things and it would be interesting maybe to discuss, you know, how we do these things. Like, for example, um, we did talk in previous episodes about keeping your accounts private, only accepting friend requests from, well, this is, we didn't discuss this, but it would be something I do, only accept friend requests from people that I know in the real world. What are your views on, on that? Well, I don't know about, about you, Fiona, and in fact you, because, um, you know, as a journalist, you need to be expanding your... I need your, all the funny words I need. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the same, I think, Fiona and I in making films. So, so like, we're trying to gather an audience. Yeah. So, so like, I'm hungry for people to, 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 to follow. So, um, I, you know... All the people who know me, <laughs> they're in the bag. I, it's yeah. new audiences I need. So that's that's really that's really tricky. But um, but if you're talking about you now someone who, like myself, you know, wouldn't really have something to promote and is just using social media, um, you know, as a way to interact with family and friends, mm. um, you know, I would think that, you know, if you know the person, you know, in in the real world, yeah. you know, that then accept, but be very wary or you might get your surgeons and you might get your <laughs> yeah, literary people. I, I, I get I get um, I don't know. I don't know about you, but as a male, um, I, I guess, um, you know, exotic looking um, females with flowers in their hair. More and more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, who, who, you know, who obviously have looked at me and have decided, oh, my God, I want to fly across the world and be with that guy. You know, <laughs> like I think I think it's very easy to uh, credibility check uh, some of some of those kinds of things. But yeah, um, I, I'm reading at the moment, actually. Um, it's the latest of the the Thursday Murder Club. Uh, I don't know if you know that series, yeah. but uh, it's set awesome. in it's set in a nursing. Uh, it's set in a, in a, um, uh, an older folks home, <laughs> and uh, they, they're detectives who solve murders. They're all you know eighty you know octogenarians, but there's there's a newcomer and there's a um, uh, somebody from uh, a foreign country who is. Um, you know, has fallen in love with him. <laughs> uh, he's never met her, um, but and she keeps wanting to come over and see him. Um, but her brother's in trouble, and she needs two thousand quid to get him out of, out of trouble. So it's a storyline in the book, you know. But the storylines in the book are real life. You know, they they yeah. come from they come from real life. Um, so there are a lot of vulnerable people, uh, a lot of lonely people, mm -hmm. um, and and I think that the book is even raising the thing, you know kind of do you disillusion this person like they're cleaning out the bank account but it's so heartbreaking to think somebody cares and then you find yeah. out that instead of being Julia from uh, you know a mountain village in in, in, in another country it's actually you know, Boris v <laughs> Boris the truck driver who's scamming people on the side or whatever you know um, but but uh, yeah I, I, I think you know I think um, if I weren't trying to get audiences for films I think um, I would have a kind of a network, a little bit like the WhatsApp groups. I think WhatsApp yeah. groups are, are, are fantastic, Great. Yeah. you know, because like we have a family WhatsApp group and we post something on there and it's literally a very tight, you know. Yeah. And there community. you can share um, in a previous episode, mm -hmm. I was talking about sharing photos, family yeah. photos mm -hmm. online. There you can yeah. share with an element yeah. of yeah. safety. Oh, you and, know? and that's you can you can f photograph in that. So, I mean, I think that's a very, very good possibility is that if you if you don't want to go delving into the world of strangers and go out into the wider community, but you're using social media to, to k stay in touch with family and friends, maybe stay away from it and yeah. concentrate on your WhatsApp mm. group, which is a ring fenced. Yeah. yeah, I think Network. Facebook is getting a bit like that, that it's like I keep in touch with all my cousins that I would never have. Like I, I you, you'd see them at weddings and funerals and 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 they live in different parts of the UK and Ireland. But it's actually a great thing for keeping in touch with with family. And then um, Twitter obviously is completely different. So I, I want to have that open. Yeah. Yeah. But then how do you deal with the, um, 
you know, the, the WhatsApp friend or family member who just constantly posts messages and you come home to like 89 messages in one I, day. I, uh, uh, I, remember, uh, I remember working in one place and uh, there was somebody who used to set, send jokes to everybody and uh, so somebody complained that they couldn't get their work done because their email box was cluttered with this guy's jokes so they complained to the head guy and the head guy took the other person aside and um, and had a word with them so the next morning we all <laughs> we all got the joke saying I've removed the head guy from the list because because he doesn't get the jokes <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah, that that's that's the difficulty with um with you know social networks, but that's the same as the party where where you go to a party and you get singled out by somebody in the corner who just fills yeah. your fills your ear full of whatever. And if you're is you're going to be safer by staying in the WhatsApp, that's much better. Yeah. The other thing is on social media to to what we've discussed earlier. Big red flag is if anyone asks you for money or yeah. anyone asks you okay. for. Yeah bank account details or any personal information um, just it's a no no yeah. I, I had an experience on selling a laptop and I got a contacted by someone that I the moniker was Jenny obviously that's not a real name but but it was a sort of a, a friendly kind of diffident sort of oh I'll be in touch with you and all sorts of, not very forceful right mm. friendly and so I was communicating with friendly Jenny and then suddenly there was a total character shift into somebody who in my mind I christened bad Vlad <laughs> who became like very demanding very manipulative like it was it was like being in a relationship with you know a very uh, demanding and manipulative narcissist who was <laughs> telling you what to do and basically like I, I kept it up because I wanted to see where it would go and I got a story out of it um, and they sent me a Bad Vlad sent me a a, a PayPal, uh, a co- quite convincing PayPal uh, request, but uh, it was uh, it, so you, you yeah. But you, it's, it, you use your own human uh, intuition, yeah, to, and you can sense even from a couple of WhatsApp messages what type of person you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you've been trying to get in, Fiona. What? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of getting distracted by what Bill said there, but it, but it's interesting. I mean, what I was going to say was you can curate and control a certain amount. Um, For example, on Facebook, you can have certain lists of friends and you can decide that you're only going to post to that list. So if if people keep wanting to connect with you and you don't like say they are distant cousins and you don't you kind of feel like you have to because you don't have family row, but you don't really want them to see everything you're doing, then you can put them onto certain lists where they don't see your content. So. Again, it's about going into your settings on the social platforms and trying to understand how can I make this best work for you? Because when you first go in, all the default settings are to the be- are to suit the social network that mm. you're on. Yeah. They're not there to serve you. Mm. So you need to go in and learn how to set all those settings so that they serve you. And I suppose for pe- anyone who, you know, it is, I find it difficult um, even looking at those settings and trying to navigate them all. And I'm sure a lot of other people you know, my age and older or all ages um, might have a difficulty in that. So I suppose it's asking for help in Mm. um, situations like that as well for, um, you know, somebody who might know more about it to be able to to help you. I I notice Mm. particularly the younger generation seem to have been born. But they were, you know, digital. they, they, They can do things that I, yeah, I have a four year old, grandchild who does things that I still can't do <laughs> with social media so, mm. no, well not social media but with computers and stuff so um, you know it is maybe asking for that help mm. um, I, I think another um, another one that came up with today's um, today's lesson that I that I that I really resonated with me was don't feed the trolls um, you know because uh, I've certainly been down that rabbit hole where um You know, as somebody with a journalistic background, you know, I'm always looking for balance and listening to the other side. So I post something and somebody will come back at me and, uh, you know, just be quite abrasive about what I've what I've said. So I enter into this conversation, what I think is a conversation with a reasonable person where, oh, no, you've misunderstood me and try to put my point across, Uh, you know, not realizing that, you know, they're literally just trying to bait you. They're literally trying to bait you. You know what I mean? And um, it took me a long time. Um, before I suddenly realised just block them 
you know. Um, but I think that I think that's something as well that um, younger people are quite ruthless that way, and they understand that they're just they're being bullied, you know, and that um, a lot of these people, you know, who who object or who you know get violent or who who are contrary, um, are literally getting their kicks out of just trying to spark off a row. You know, and it, it's about your mental health as well, because yeah. it does affect your mental health when you're, you know, getting into these arguments or you're seeing these, um, you know, responses or comments, mm-hmm. um, you know, and this bullying, um, you know, and it's protecting um, yourself mm-hmm. from that. Yeah. And that's one way to assess whether you want to be connected to somebody. I mean, if you're if it's happening to you and the person is is saying negative things to you, then clearly you're uh, you might not want to be connected to that person. But also watch what they say to other people. So if they're commenting on other people's posts, look at their comments and see, are they fair and balanced? Are they using a good tone of voice? Are they using appropriate language or are they stirring up hatred? Are they being negative? Are they using aggressive language? And if they are, then they might not be the kind of person that you want to be connected with. Yeah. And I know some people in with public profiles, um, they what they will do is just delete and block. And I think, you know, if if they're constantly being bombarded by negative delete and block. And I think even with our own private account or personal accounts, mm-hmm. if it's an if it's an open account account or if it's somebody who is constantly. Getting, mm. getting I'm, I'm, I'm totally ruthless. I mean, I block if somebody's even a little bit boring, like, I mean, one, <laughs> one pass. Cute cat post and they're gone. No, no, I'm afraid. <laughs> that way. It's that way I don't get your posts anymore. Well, th- this is Twitter. I mean, not, uh, so Twitter, I want in, I want useful information. Thank God he has liked some of my posts on Twitter. But I, I do, I do think, I do think, uh, getting back to what you had said in an earlier conversation, Fiona, um, it's identifying the different platforms and what you want out of each platform and using them in different ways. You know, um, I, some people might be just perfectly happy to just have a WhatsApp group, or some people might be perfectly happy to have a Facebook group, and then some people need to have a presence on different platforms. Mm-hmm. But I think, um, I think, kind of going into it with what do I want from this, and then being ruthless about anything that's not in that. Um, is yeah. a very good way of navigating it because it does become very overwhelming, overwhelming very quickly. And taking those breaks, um, you know, now and again for your mental health so you don't have that digital overload. Yes, in fact, we're recording on the day when everyone is encouraged to take a 24 hour break from social media. Yeah. Ah. So we're taking a break from our phones and things now. We're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we, we were talking about sea, sea swimming uh, earlier on. And that's I mean, part of that is that you can't bring your digital stuff yeah. <laughs> to the beach or you can't use Not it. Yet. <laughs> I think one of the one of the uh, things I worry about, uh, though, is that um, we talked we talked earlier about AI and all that all, all that kind of thing. Um, what we didn't talk about is what it does to your own image. So you can now go online and you're having a conversation, a video conversation with somebody and you can tweak yourself <laughs> so that you've got a filter on and, you know, um, the kind of, you know, I, my, my eyebrows might be a little bit, you know, less kind of patchy and grey and, uh, you know, I, you, uh, you might get rid of the gels and you can you can do all that as a filter at, at, at a click. Mm. But the problem is then that people become used to liking themselves in that way and communicating with people in that mm-hmm. way. So then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have to meet them in real life for a coffee, but I don't look like what they're used to seeing. And and I, I, I do have... I do have a worry that um, that people are building up expectations within themselves about how people see them that are unattainable in the real world. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and, and I think it puts an awful lot of pressure, especially on younger people yeah. um, uh, where, where, you know, I remember as a teenager feeling very vulnerable all the time and feeling, you know, things that people I know people wouldn't have noticed now. But at the time, I thought a little little pimple or, or whatever was going to, you know, I was, you know, and I, and I think that if I had been in today's world and I had been able to make myself mm-hmm. look the way I felt I looked great and then having to walk out looking like me, I think that would have been very daunting. Um, mm-hmm. So so uh, I think I think we talk about AI and bots and fakes and deep fakes. I think your own deep fake, <laughs> your mm-hmm. own your own kind of alteration of, of that um, where you're fooling yourself, really. Yeah. Um, I think that's a that's a danger as well. To look and it is it. becoming a societal like we're t- society. We're changing the image of what, you know, of what 
the perfect images or where we have these expectations of people. You know, we've seen that a lot in print magazines and things like that, where people are photoshopped and all that, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. It's, it's sad. Yeah. It used to be um, it used to be the, the kind of magazine perfect yeah. figure that everybody aspired to and wasn't real because it had been photoshopped. I can now take that and bring it into a world of yeah. AI where photoshopping is in the halfpenny place compared to what they can do now, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, though, though it's funny enough now, they, they, the, the big thing I see the Ray Bans have the glasses now, where you, you know, you have this augmented reality. So, um, so you, you can probably, I imagine, you'll probably be able to set those glasses so that everybody looks the way you want them to look. You know, so if, you know, and and if everyone's wearing them, then nobody will be seeing anybody. <laughs> well, we might explore where we think um, in the in one of our future episodes, we might explore where we where think it's all going. It's all going. But thank you so much. Um, And I will talk to you again soon. Pleasure. Super.